What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we've got the top 5 weapons inside of Helldivers 2. We're gonna get straight into it. Starting off at number 5, we've got the P19 Redeemer. This is gonna be our sidearm. It's gonna be the best sidearm for us to use. The revolver is definitely a meme gun. Don't worry about it. But this is arguably something that beats out some of the primary weapons and you cannot go wrong with having this at your side. It is definitely going to be the number one go-to to switch over to once you've hit that depleted amount of ammo, especially when you're phasing off with some of those terminates and even in some instances within the automaton run. But moving on to rank number four, we've got the AR-23 Liberator, your best all-around type of assault rifle weapon, even though the assault rifles in this game, sadly enough, aren't really hitting the mark for me all that much. I haven't really used them since the beginning of the game, and I will let you know as to what my leveling weapon was, but obviously this is going to be one of the first ones that you have inside of the game. I can't remember if this is like the base weapon that you get, but it's a nice well-rounder if you're looking for something with decent rate of fire decent-ish amount of ammo inside of its uh, magazine and pretty stable. You're going to do quite all right with this. And I would highly suggest using this over the Liberator Penetrator as for whatever reason that medium armor penetrating doesn't seem to truly do much at all and you are losing that, well, you're losing 15 rounds and basically 10 damage every every bullet It it and more recoil. It just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. I wish there was a, a reason to utilize the Limperator Penetrator, but but I can't arguably make that argument. Moving on to rank 3, we've got the SG-8 Punisher. This was my leveling weapon. I greatly preferred this to the Assault Rifle as it dished out quite a bit of damage. It may not have the craziest rate of fire, but it does make up for that in the fact that it does have stopping power. But another thing that will be the drawback to this weapon is its rate of fire is slow as being a pump action. And on top of that, we have the problem or the problem of having to load shell after shell each time that we reload this. It does fit 16 shells inside of it, so it's not the lowest chamber that we can hold uh, all that ammunition in. But at the same time, it can be a bit slow in certain instances, and it will be overtaken by another weapon later on. Arguably, there is another weapon that I would use as a leveling weapon that will be rank number two. Here at rank number two, we've got SMG 37 Defender, one of the unsung heroes of the game. I honestly don't understand why I haven't seen a lot more people utilize this weapon. It is extremely accurate, arguably the most accurate gain, ugh, gun inside of the game, other than the energy-based weapon of the Scythe. And on top of that, it does 70 damage per shot. It has a 45 round magazine, decent rate of fire, only 100 less than that of the assault rifle at the very top. And you can use it one-handed, so any time that you're carrying one of those hard drives for that specific mission where you have to upload the data, this is actually going to come in extremely handy, and the fact of how accurate it is, and even in the first-person perspective with the red dot on it, extremely easy to see where your shots are going to land. Um, It's a hard argu arguably if the rank 1 gun inside of this game didn't exist, I would probably put this one as rank one. This would be my all-time favorite, and I would utilize this over the assault rifle every single time. If you've already unlocked this one and you haven't really given it a shot, do so. It is definitely going to be something that helps you both on the Terminid and Automaton side, and I was quite shocked at how well it did against the Automaton specifically, especially with how accurate it is. It is a lot easier to hit some of those weak spots that are those tiny little heads, the little red symbols on most of them, and to be able to just hold down the trigger and still be able to keep on target with minimal aim control, it's, it's, it's tried and true. Now coming up at rank number one, the only gun you should arguably be using inside of the game is the SG-225 Breaker. This auto shotgun is decimating the damage of every single weapon inside of this game. If you are pushing into the higher difficulties, this is the only weapon I would arguably say is worth your while. Every other weapon just does not compare to this. Sure, you may be reloading quite often, but this is probably going to save you and your team almost 10 times out of 10. There is no other reason you should be using any other weapon if you are past the extreme difficulty. Arguably the only other weapon that I can see being viable is that SMG in the rank number two. Beyond that, everything else just doesn't seem to compare. It doesn't have the ammo capacity to compare. It doesn't have the fire rate with the damage to make it worthwhile. And overall, 
side by side this breaker shotgun and the smg just have easy to control recoil overall when it comes to just facing down with anything and the breaker just outshines everything when it comes to just sheer clearing power on top of being something that can actually take down the chargers with just its damage hitting the weak spot and even being able to take on even the uh, medium-sized automatons with relative ease especially those meat saws that are coming chasing you down you will easily be able to clear two or three sometimes as long as you're being able to lead those shots i would highly suggest crouching while firing this when you're in those moments with meat saw automatons chasing you down and trying to get that circle or get that red dot directly on that little face in the middle if you can do that less than half the magazine you're going to be able to take them down fairly quickly and you should be able to take down multiple in quick succession and save your life or save your team's life it's a decimator it's the number one gun inside of this game and i cannot make an argument for any other weapon inside of the game above this and past a certain difficulty it really is the one weapon you want to use there's just nothing else that i can truly say it's good to sort this out the only other thing that i would feel comfortable with would be that smg 37. Now that being said, some honorable mentions is going to be the Jar 5 Dominator. If you do have the premium Warbonds pass thing, this is fairly decent on the Automaton side of things. I would not use this for the Terminated side. It does not work very well, but against the Automatons, it does have that capability of a little bit of pinpoint accuracy. It does have some explosive damage to it, so it can actually be useful against the Star Wars walker things if you shoot them in the leg since it is explosive it can knock them over so it has benefit to it it has decent damage to it it just doesn't have quite that sizable magazine and it does have a good bit of recoil to it which makes it terrible for the terminid side of things it just does not compare to any other weapon it's too slow it doesn't have enough ammunition and it will not kill quick enough with how many other smaller enemies you have whereas on the automaton side of things you have a little bit to time to work with but i will say the weakest point on the automaton side is trying to utilize this against those meat saws if you've got multiple pushing on you it's going to be a bit struggling you are constantly going to be on that back foot retreating running back reloading trying to get those shots and trying to land them with it being having an increase to recoil it's it's a good bit of frustration now the other thing to mention is the liberator explosive this on the terminated side of things does have a bit of a crowd control effect to it you are cost at a huge cost to your rate of fire with this weapon but it can be life-saving in a way considering it does have explosive rounds that don't do the same thing on the automaton side of things but when you do shoot some of the enemies inside of the determinant side of things if you shoot them in the flesh it can have a pushback effect where they almost feel that explosive round and then start backing up and you can continuously cause them to back up including some of the bigger boy type of terminated the uh the warrior one that's much bigger that has that big head that after you shoot it off it still keeps coming for you that thing can be frustrating if it charges you and then your whole screen goes shaky and you get knocked to the ground but with this you can actually push those types back even the ones that have the armor on the front and the head that one as well if you're able to hit one of its soft spots that will also get pushed back and a lot of the other terminated smaller bugs will get pushed back from every shot from this which is something that can either save you push and create space between you and some of those enemies or you can get one of those moments to save one of your teammates by shooting that terminated and pushing them back off of them if they don't have the same weapon or if they are incapable of being able to fire at that moment a lot of times there's so many different times where you're stuck on reload and then you're getting still pounced upon by some of those bugs so something like this weapon has a place in that certain instance to have a, a bit of strategic ability to it i won't say it's completely useless but it is definitely useless when it comes to the automaton side of things and that's why i did not put it in the top five the last honorable mention is the Diligence Counter Sniper. I've seen some other people say that this is within the S tier. It is a solid weapon. I will say it's a viable weapon. I wouldn't consider it S tier. I consider it A tier. I really like the sight on this. It may not be the clearest, but it has a little bit of zoom to it. And the shots do have a good bit of damage to them. When it comes to facing off with the automatons, 
this can be a useful weapon if you're within a group to be able to pick off certain enemies at a distance you can land those headshots on the weak spots of some of those medium-sized automaton enemies the one with the rockets on their back or the shields if you can get those weak spot hits you can actually one tap with this weapon it can be quite useful and this is all based around the hell dive difficulty that i have done the testing with these weapons this will all be effective within the hardest difficulty of the game we're almost at 100 hours now and i have deep dove within pretty much every one of these weapons tried each one of them more than a handful of matches at the hardest difficulty and out of this these are the ones that have really shined the most and what I have learned is that some of these weapons are better for one side or better for the other, or even just they have a little bit of niche quality to them, considering I probably would never use the Breakers Spray and Pray or the Incendiary unless I was just going for a meme build with the Incendiary where it's a full-on flame build. I may possibly do this in the future, but who knows? It, it's something to just kind of play around with, but at the same time, I don't believe it's something that will work at the Hell Dive difficulty when it comes to what is going to be the best in slot for pushing into the highest difficulty, really taking on that meaty challenge and just having a good time and basically making every match feel like its own story. Hell Dive and these weapons in the top five are going to be the way to go when it comes to facing off with everything you have. But that's going to be it right there, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully this has helped you out. If you'd like to see some more of this content, hit that subscribe button. We have plenty more coming in the future for Hell Divers too. We will be covering most of the updates coming in the future we'll be hitting each one of those war bonds and constantly coming back for each update that we may see in the future i'm loving this game so far you know sound off in the comments down below you know do you agree with everything on this list do you have anything that i should have suggested or possibly something i may have overlooked that who knows maybe you understand the medium penetration is working somewhere better inside of extreme difficulty whereas hell dive is just you know everything's so heavily armored it doesn't even matter Maybe that's how I'm missing it, but I just go for the hardest difficulty and keep plowing through. So I feel like that's the ultimate challenge. That's where it's satisfying for me, and being able to conquer that just gives me that ultimate satisfaction. But on that note, if you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the description. Follow me over at Twitch. We are streaming daily. We have plenty more of this Helldivers 2 content to keep rolling through and helping out some of those people and pushing in that Galactic War campaign, as well as trying to find... Uh, Effectively, I will be taking the time soon enough to talk about how to face off of the automatons and terminid at hell dive difficulty, giving you a, a pretty strategic guide on how to make it through the hell dive difficulty. It can be daunting in certain moments, and there are definitely times where you can drop in and it is absolutely just uh, throwing you into the meat grinder. It can be frustrating, and but you can make it out of it. And I will showcase how to survive hell dive in future videos coming forward. But on that note. Hopefully you enjoyed and have a good one.